it gets extra nutrient. Think about it. For Hi. <laughs> Come. What's up, Fish Tank people? Dawson's Fish Tanks and Daisy bringing it to you on a Sunday, baby. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'm gonna bring you an update on Greenhouse 3.0. I'm also gonna talk about a massive fail that can teach you something in your aquariums. I'm gonna talk about growing plants faster, how to grow plants faster. But it's Sunday, it's spigot of spigot of species Sunday. I'm gonna bring you some plants that'll help you breed some fish too. Here we go. Here's an update on Greenhouse 3.0. There's no update. Don't ever ask anybody how long construction is going to take or when it's going to be done because you never know when it's going to be done. It's like dominoes in reverse. The building permit came a little bit late. These guys were on another job. They just came back now and they're batting it out, but there hadn't been a whole bunch going on in the past week or so. Let's talk about some plants. I want to show you a fail and teach you something about growing plants faster in the same time. Before I show you the fail, I do want to show you some of the success. This is the Leopard Val Basin. This is where the sauce is, folks, when you get it balanced and you get it right. This basin sits in full sun, and I absolutely love the way it is coming. Uh, as you sow, so shall you reap. We're reaping it right now with this basin. The success in this basin uh, was from doing the work early and doing the water changes early when we had uh, excess nutrients in the water column. This basin got a little bit more love than the other ones because uh, of the fail I had right before it, but I was doing the water changes so we never had excess nutrients. We kept the CO2 levels really high, which is very important in high light settings, high light being full sun in Kentucky. So we kept the CO2 high and we had this thing dialed in and then every now and then we hit it with about a 50 to 75% water change. There are actually a couple of fish in here too. Hardly any algae in this basin at all. Absolutely loving this, but it isn't always perfect. Let me show you a fail. How to grow plants faster. The first thing you need when you want to grow plants faster is you need to imitate the sun, the four bajillion year old ball of fire in the sky, that's right. However, too much sun can get you off balance, get you off balance, leave your tank an algae covered mess and make it look like a swamp monster. So my goal is to grow plants as fast as possible out here. So what do I do? I have my last of the four vowel basins planted, but the plants are not growing fast enough. Now in this basin, as we turn over here, we've actually had some duckweed and some water lettuce on top of here. Now, I make mistakes like all the rest of you. Dustin came up to this basin and said, I want to grow some plants faster. I know what I'll do. I'll make sure there's more light. So I removed almost all of the water hyacinth and the water duckweed. And guess what happened to yours truly with too much light? Yep, look at this. Oh, Mr. Algae came to town, that's right. What did I do? I removed the floating plants. The floating plants were actually doing me good because they're absorbing the excess nutrients in the newly dirted tank. So there was too much nutrients, too much light, and yes, we got some algae on our wonderful Italian Val here. The floating plants were doing me good. They're above the water line. They were absorbing excess nutrients faster. So what did I do? I actually learned from my mistakes and I wanna show you that over here with how we've used floating plants and left it alone and how the plants are growing in this other basin. Check this out. Okay, so what did we learn from the Italian Val fail? We learned that we wanna leave the floating plants. So I have left this water lettuce floating on top of this basin. This basin is full of sag and it's full of swords. Now, to the untrained eye, you're gonna look at this and go, oh my God, this is Azola for days. Like, what are we gonna do? It's like thick masses of this stuff. But look at underneath here, Andrew, get close, baby. This is through full sun. This is blocked full Kentucky, like all summer sun. And look what's going on underneath here. giant plant growth, sad growing like crazy, despite being under there. Look at that. I mean, that is like full mass, full throttle, 
like giant plants growing underneath all of that azolla. Now, you can thin it out a little bit, but the reality of it is, you're checking this out, you can see this stuff is growing in dirt and growing like crazy. It's actually a tall sag. But despite being underneath a pretty dense carpet of azolla on the surface, there is enough light getting through that these plants are growing algae-free underneath because the excess nutrients from the dirt is being absorbed by our wonderful illegal in many states plant, Azola. Oh, by the way, here is a monster sword to show you all growing in full dirt, just how that's going. By the way, that's CO2 coming up through there. That was a tiny little sword when we planted it. Fully submerged sword, a lot of fun there. Before I talk about some floating plants that'll do you good with breeding fish, I also want to talk about some fun fluffy plants we got rolling on here at Greenhouse 2.0. Everybody knows we got the Myriophyllum tuberculatum. We got two other types of Myriophyllum right now. We got the Myrio, I'm not trying to pronounce this one. It's a green fluffier one with the more of a red stem. And then we've also got the other Myriophyllum over here. Both of these super easy growers for us. We actually started with the harder tuberculatum and now we're working into this Matagorensis and however you pronounce these other ones here. Check out Myriophyllum, folks. Also known as foxtail by the kids on the street. Those are some easy ones that grow, easy to breed fish in. But now let's talk about some floating plants. But it's Sunday, it's Spigot of Spigot of Species Sunday. I want to talk about some aquarium fish species that we bred and how we bred them and what plants we've used to breed them with. In my hands are the Oso oh Invasive Water Lettuce and the Oso oh Invasive Water Hyacinth. These are illegal in many a state. Think about it if you were a fish, folks. Where would you like to get busy, okay? These plants sit on the surface of the aquarium. One of the fish I've happened to breed has been rainbows. I know my man Gary Don't Carry Lang uses spawning mops made out of yarn. Well, guess what they rainbow fish would breed in very freaking easily? It's floating plants with long roots. Think about it if you were a fish. Where would you want to get busy? I would be all up in here laying eggs. There's a great places for the eggs to lay. There's a great place to lay fry. There's good stuff living on the roots of the plants that the fry can eat off of. Big dangling hanging roots down into your aquarium. But we gotta flip this back to the first lesson we talked about. Think about this plant and what we're talking about with excess nutrient absorption. This plant is floating at the surface. At the surface, it gets readily available CO2 from the atmosphere. It gets as much light as possible and it can grow faster. So you can use these types of plants as a algae excess nutrient absorption control mechanism. And when you get sick of them, you yank them out and you throw them away. So yes, if I was a fish, I would want to be breeding in these platies all you need is a male a female and some water to breed them however rainbow fish have bred for me in floating plants like this i also want to point out loaches i'm not exactly sure what we did with the weather loaches i think it was a combination of a heavy heavy plant load and ridiculous water changes but we have bred loaches in the greenhouse platies rainbows and loaches breeding on a sunday baby if you like what we're doing hit the subscribe button make it an awesome week and tank on